Hey YouTube, it's Justin the Junkie. How the fuck are you guys doing today? So today, uh, this video is going to be like a trucking business type video. Uh, I'm actually in the Street Beast heading up to uh, Northern Ohio here. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. Uh, we were going to look at uh, some new dump trucks. Really what we're doing is we're going to put a deposit down on a couple trucks and uh, get ready to order some new ones. And I'm going to talk about like in my business what type of dump truck I'm looking for and why I'm specifically buying that one and we're going to talk about some other stuff that uh, we'll wrap up a little bit later uh, in the back part of the video so uh, what it is is that when people start businesses and stuff like that you know sometimes I'm a little intimidated you know like I've never understood how to buy a dump truck it's kind of different than buying a car if you will like uh, the dealerships, there's not very many of them, so they don't tr they don't treat you very well. Like uh, the reason I'm going up to Northern Ohio is is that the people in Cincinnati, um, I went into well the Kenwood dealership and I told the guy that uh, hey I need to buy some trucks, and he fucking laughed at me. You know, like he's like who are you? I was like well what the hell does that matter? You know, like, what the fuck, bro? You know, like, you completely are laughing at me because I want to buy, uh, you know, six dump trucks at one time. You know, like, I need some equipment here, you know. Uh, and they laughed at me. So I had to leave there. Uh, I just walked out. The guy couldn't even call me by my real name. Like, I told him my name was Justin, and he kept calling me John. It was just a whole frustrating situation that the guy just didn't treat me very well. And that happens time to time, you know, that people may not, you know, that I don't look like a guy that maybe has $1.2 million in their pocket. But, you know, you never judge a book by its cover. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, uh, we're going to go up here. We're going to look at these trucks. Uh, you, most of you are going to be excited about the brand that I'm going to look at. Some of you will not. But we're going to go look at these trucks. We're going to do a walk around of it. We're going to talk about kind of what I'm buying uh, or what I'm going to potentially buy. There's, a, there's another deal that I'm working on that is going to help me. And I really, I, I can't explain what's going on. You're just going to have to come along for the ride. And also, I will not be answering any questions about how this all happened or anything like that. It is uh, the person chooses to be anonymous. So that's what we're doing. But we're going up to Finley, Ohio. Uh, it's about whew, 160 miles away from my shop. So uh, up here in northern Ohio, which basically looks, you know, there's fucking nothing here. Uh, but we'll talk about it when we get there. And then on the way home or when we get back to the shop, I'll show you the spec sheets and what that looks like. Because a lot of people, if you're starting a business and you're new to trucking and you want to buy new trucks, you know, this is all kind of intimidating. And I want to say, man, it's not that hard. I mean, I've done a lot of research, so I kind of know what I want. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm buying what I'm buying for, like, the type of work that I do and the type of work that I could be doing in the future. You want to build some versatility into your equipment, especially if you're going to keep it 5 to 10 years um, if you're, you know, out there in the trucking business. So we'll turn you around here and let you take a look at uh, the beautiful northern Ohio fucking farmland here. So this is some asshole in a Lincoln over here, and yep, I'm running on the fucking, I'm on the rumble strips. But this is what we're doing. We're uh, in the street beast. Let's see what kind of fuel mileage we're getting. Look at that. Well, if you can even see that. 13.2. Just a fucking 
sipping the fuel, boys. Sipping the fuel. Actually, once I got, uh, once GM, once GM did this update on the, on the, uh, DEF system that I just got, the fuel mileage just went up almost two miles a gallon, which is pretty fucking good. So, uh, that's it. Uh, I'll let you know when we get to the dealership. I uh, just wanted to pop in here and tell you kind of what this video is going to be about and all that bullshit. I got a, I got a complaint here that we're going to make. I know you guys like this stuff, but uh, we're going to talk about something here. I am passing uh, this, what I call Michigan drivers, okay? Now, Michigan drivers, attention. When you drive through the state of Ohio, okay, don't get in the fucking hammer lane, okay, and do the speed limit, bud, all right? And if you do want to get in the hammer lane to pass a truck, I understand it. I understand it. Get the fuck back over, okay? That is one major complaint I have uh, about living in Ohio is motherfucking Michigan drivers. I think that I don't know what's in the water up there, but they all must be two steps away from wearing a helmet or something. I don't know how they get into there. Uh, this guy was all, you know, in the fucking way of the street beast. And then you pass them and then they look at you like you're an asshole. But anyway, attention Michigan drivers, when you're coming through Ohio, all right, when... We, if you see Ohio plates, especially the street beast, move it over, bud. Move it over. Don't make me turn the cruise control off, okay? Just a little piece of advice for the Michigan drivers. Hopefully, uh, you know, I can start making a difference one YouTube video at a time, fellas. But anyway, uh, we'll get back to you when we get to this dealership. Just wanted to share that valuable piece of information. We're in the dump truck. I just backed it up. I got to get out and clear the mirror. It snowed up here uh, last night. And I got to clean the mirror. So what we're looking at here is, uh, well, I'll get out and show it to you. But this is the cab. Uh, so what you got here is this is all the body control stuff and uh, everything like that. Your left gauge. That's left gauge, strobes, tailgate. Dude, they got these set at. Oh man, they got zero shit, these things. Alright, the one thing that I know, uh, you know, they got a whole bunch of spare switches up here. Uh, this is definitely not the Western Star. The steering wheel is nice, though, and the gear shifter feels good. One thing that I was just concerned about Peterbilt's is, is that. You know, the cab room is very tight, but these seem to be okay. Uh, the one thing that I would want to do is, the one thing that I would want to do is have this move back here. But I guess you could put a trash can back here and would have it. But the guys can have all their stuff in here, you know, I'm just checking this thing out. But we'll get out and look at it uh, here in a little bit, you know. Uh, we're going to go take her for a test drive and I'll bring you guys along but uh, I was trying to see if it had heated fucking meters uh, but it doesn't oh okay here we go oh yeah it's got heated mirrors all right so we'll get out we'll take a look at it and uh, go from there but this is the interior very nice uh, you can see real good out of this thing so we'll check it out Alrighty, here's what we're looking at. Uh, this is a Peterbilt uh, 567 6-axle six dump truck steel bed. Uh, the only thing I really don't like about this one is the air rise, as mentioned. Um, but what it has here is an asphalt uh, type box on it. This helps you get in the paver. Um, this box is actually really good. This color is, you know, this silver color is not bad. But anyway, uh, we're looking at this. We're going to go take a test drive in it. Here. Uh, 
this motor has a Cummins uh, 500 horsepower motor. That ain't enough power for what Justin does. 30 ton on this thing, this thing would be a pig. But it does have an 18 speed, that interests me. Uh, we'll come around here, check out the front here. if I was to take this one, but it's already sold. So I'm gonna go take it for a test drive. I'll do a walk around with a bed up. We'll take a look at it, uh, all that stuff when I get back. I'll show you guys what a spec sheet and all that stuff looks like and we'll go from there. I thought I'd show you this. Old 389 Peterbilt. This yellow color here. Bob's going to get the key, but we're thinking about getting a we're thinking about getting a 389 here. I'll show it to you. You know, a 389. This is a long hood. You know. But we're going to get ours with the breather lights, platinum breathers, behind the doors, all that shit. But that's a 389 yellow Peterbilt. Here's another 389 day cab. This is heavy haul truck here. See, this is a 20,000 pound pusher right here. Uh, this is a straight beam, but this is a heavy haul truck right here. This has probably got like 52,000 pound axles in it or some shit like that. Alrighty, uh, we made it back to the shop. Uh, well, this is Saturday. Yesterday was a long day of driving. Uh, so what I did, as you can see by earlier in the video, we went up to a Peterbilt store in uh, Northern Ohio. And what I was doing is putting some deposits on some dump trucks and custom are uh, ordering uh, basically four more now this what I'm doing is is uh, I'm working on some stuff behind the scenes uh, to expand my business uh, rapidly okay and we're doing a whole bunch of stuff that we got going on I'm not really not gonna explain kind of what's going on uh, like I said earlier in the video this is just kind of talking about what I got going on so I'm not saying this deal is 100%. It's probably closer to 60% done. But I had to do this a part of the timeline uh, just so we don't lose these trucks. Now, dump trucks right now in the state of Ohio are hard to get. Okay? Hard to get. I don't even know, you know, like, why it's so difficult. But uh, it's not like a car dealership where... They have, you know, there's 150 car dealerships and you can pretty much find what you want in a couple, you know, in, in a week or two or something like that. Or they do dealer trades. Bigger, the, the truck, they don't like to trade dealer or dealerships and it, it's a whole fucked up mess. I don't understand why they don't make it easy. Uh, right now, the dump truck market is very hot, okay? Uh, what I mean by that is, is the fast, as fast as they can get them in and done, they are gone. They only sit on the lot maybe a week. Uh, I ask, why aren't you ordering 50 of them? Well, they say, well, we really can't because they're expensive and all this shit. I said, well, whatever. But anyway, I, it's just different how they run their business. But anyway... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over kind of the spec sheets here and let you understand how this kind of works. This is different than buying a car. 
Um, if you're new to the trucking business and stuff like that, you are it's going to be intimidating to go to the dealership, right? They're going to be, it's kind of fucked up. They treat you not very good because, you know, they don't think that you have any money and they don't, you know, when you ask them for, can you get this shit done? They kind of hem haul around and really they don't want to get shit done really is what I could see. You know, I mean, I think if I opened a dealership up, I would do pretty fucking good because, you know, I kind of understand the four different areas of work uh, that you can do, and you got to have a couple of each variation in there just to start, and then you'll kind of get an idea of what everybody wants. So, anyway, I'm going to talk about kind of what uh, I did up there. You know, like uh, we put the posits on. You'll see that I went and test drove the truck. Uh, the one that I test drove was already sold, or I would have put a deposit on that one too. Uh, but I didn't get up there in enough time. They sold it. We talked about it Monday, and they sold it on Wednesday. That's how fast they go. Monday, nobody was there. Guy came in Wednesday and bought it. But they have two more coming in uh, that will be done by April 1st. And that helps my timeline. That's why I had to go to this dealership. Uh, here where I live in Cincinnati, nobody has this stuff. Now, you're probably thinking, why can't I go to another dealership? Well, in the state of Ohio, our bridge laws are different than any surrounding state in our area, okay? Uh, that means that in Kentucky, I could go over and haul 80,000 pounds on a triaxle. So I'd have a triaxle with a really short bed with about 80 foot of board on the top of it, and we'd be putting 27 ton in that thing because the triaxle weighs less, okay? Uh, Indiana is the same way. They recognize, they don't recognize uh, spare or the extra lift axles like I have on my trucks. So really, you only have the dealerships that are in the state of Ohio, and there is only, you know, we have five major cities. So there's six dealerships, basically, in the state of Ohio, and that's really all you got. And, uh, you know, Northern Ohio has a lot of business going on right now where they're doing a lot of construction. Southern Ohio has a lot of uh, a lot of construction business right now is booming and Columbus the construction business is booming. So, you know, hashtag Trump making America great again. But anyway, we just got a bunch of work going on and these trucks are becoming harder and harder to get. So, uh, I'll just show you around here and I'll just kind of show you uh, what a spec sheet looks like. And it's kind of like a car spec sheet, but you can get a fucking million options on these things. I didn't know. We spent about four hours custom ordering the other ones uh, yesterday. And as when that deal gets finalized on those, I will show you the spec sheets on those, what I bought. Um, as you can tell, we're going to be buying Peterbilt trucks. Um, if we're going to expand the fleet uh, to a two multiple trucks uh part of that and having being able to successfully keep the trucks going what you need is you need you know kind of like a one brand that you're going to stick with now why i say that is because it's easy to get parts it's not easy to get parts but you only have to go to one place okay and you can just go to one place and they'll have all the parts there you have a parts account it saves you from having to drive all around to three deal three different dealerships in the city and collect parts because uh you know if you have one truck that all oh, a switch broke you know to order a couple extra switches and have it here at your shop or <clears throat> just kind of what was it gonna say? you know kind of like even engine sensors or something like that that you know like a def sensor goes out you know you want to buy a couple other ones so you have them on hand, so if that happens again, it's easily just a unscrew sensor, plug in a new one, and go about your merry way. Uh, you know, we're also going to have to look into a scanner to uh, kind of work on these kind of trucks just to do some derating and force regens and stuff like that. It's going to have to have bi-directional control. Uh, I'm probably going to have to get a <clears throat> maybe a Cummins factory tool and maybe a snap-on scanner to talk to the ABS and stuff like that. So let's go around here. I'll show you guys kind of what a Peterbilt spec sheet looks like and explain kind of what's going on here. Okay, this is what a Peterbilt spec sheet looks like. 
So it's chassis order, doom to doom. Uh, Robert Grostein is the guy, Bob, who I'm working with up there. Okay, <clears throat> this is the spec sheet. So this is when the chassis was ordered. Uh, was 220s or no this is when they wanted to this is when it's gonna land it was actually a couple days later uh, <clears throat> the tentative date was 225 firm date you know 12 of 18 okay so what the wheelbase is is 296 inches okay uh, that's the total wheelbase so that's your length and I don't know exactly how much feet that is, but what it is is it's a base model uh, for or 567 conventional cab. Uh, I just got these. Um, you can see here that it's a uh, <clears throat> 11 and a half inch frame rail thickness, 3 eighths frame rail thickness. It's double framed. It's going to have uh, three pushers on it and it's going to have a 10 and quarter three full steel liner that's your double rail of the dump truck okay we come down here uh you know this is all this stuff it's going to have uh 20 000 pound front axles on it that's what you need it's going to be taper leaf so the taper leafs ride a little bit better than the flat reef stuff this truck actually drives really nice uh you can see out of it very very spacious N nice truck um it's going to have cam it's going to have uh, regular drum brakes. I am going to try some. The next ones will have all disc brakes and stuff like that. You know, all that type of shit. The rear equipment is a 46,000 pound rear axle, 80,000 gross vehicle weight on the thing. So it's going to have uh, three Watson and Challenge uh, push axles on it. And the spacing is 44 inches in between each stuff. Or the first one starts at 44, 84, 126. Uh, they do all that type of stuff to have that. Uh, the rear bra or the rear suspension is going to be over here somewhere. Yes, and that's Hendrickson Hallmax suspension, uh, 54 inch spacing, and 60k creep rating, which I don't really know what that means, but maybe somebody in the thing will talk about it. Uh, the lift axles and regulators are tie straps, so this came with lift axles. They're going to install them in the dash and all that type of shit. The engines are the X15 Efficiency Series. Uh, these are going to be 500 uh, 1650 torque. I wanted bigger motors, but I have to take what I can get right now. Uh, we can always fix this later. So this is all the stuff. It's going to have a timer for uh, to shut it off so the guys aren't idling, all this stuff. But you can pick all this type of bullshit here. Okay, uh, what it is is there's going to be one white one and one Viper blue uh, is what they are. These trucks are both identical, just uh, that different stuff. And this is miscellaneous, so you get a one-year, 100,000-mile warranty just on frame and all that type of stuff. I don't know what the engine warranty is. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, where these are going is to American Road Machinery Company. That is the body company in Canton. I will have to go up there uh, sometime next week and deal with them on what I want the bodies to be done. And the bodies are already done. Just what to add to them. I want to add some shovel brackets and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's uh, that's pretty much what a spec sheet looks like. But anyway, uh, that's what a spec sheet <clears throat> is and does uh it takes you a little bit to understand these you're gonna have to look at a couple of them to understand uh what it is but your salesman will be able to check it out but and uh i'd also like to say in this video if there is a guy that stopped me on the highway and said hey man uh i love your videos if you can tell me where that was and what truck you were in uh you know and leave a comment in the comment this section uh I might send you something if you comment on this video, but uh, I think that's about it on the truck stuff. That's how you go about going to buy uh, a dump truck. It's really not that intimidating. It just is what it is, but uh, like always, check out the Patreon account. Check out uh, OnlineToolVendors.com, Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz, and uh, like always, thanks for watching. I gotta fucking go.